Welcome back to another YouTube video and today we're going to be talking about Magento SEO, specifically what I look at um, whenever I'm doing SEO for Magento websites for clients and stuff. It's also a very commonly asked question that I get. Um, like people always ask me like what, what's the what's the first steps to doing Magento SEO? Where should I like where should I focus my time? Um, and the honest answer is it can definitely be a minefield, but I'm hoping that this video provides a better understanding of what you should and shouldn't be looking at when you're trying to scale out your, your organic SEO presence when, you, when you've got a Magento website. So that being said, um, let's get into the video. So the biggest mistake that I always see when people set up a Magento store, especially if they don't have much of an SEO background, is the fact that they want to rank for, for example, buy sofas online. And they don't stop until they rank position number one for that. But it's actually the wrong mindset you should have um, because there's all of the, the different variations that you can also rank for. Um, Wayfair. The reason why we're looking at Wayfair is they do a very, very good job of that. So, for example, they in America, they rank 1, 2, 3, 4, f no, sorry, I'm, I'm counting the wrong thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They rank position number 5 for Buy Sofas Online, which is 100 searches a month, 34 um, keyword difficulty. And now... There's all the different variations that you can also rank. So one thing that um, Wayfair do, and I highly recommend you guys do this if obviously you guys are using Magento. This also applies to Shopify as well, just so you guys know. It's not just a, you can only do this on Magento, you can't do this on Shopify. Definitely this works on Shopify, uh, WooCommerce, and obviously Magento as well. But if we actually take a look down the left hand side what you will see is they have all these different colors um, of sofas now again this does depend on the size of your e-commerce store so if say for example you've got 10 products you might not be able to go as detailed as what wayfair have done but if we click on black here as you can see, they've got a different URL that only holds all of their black um, sofas. So when somebody was to, or if somebody was to search by black uh, sofas, there is a good chance that Magento, or that Wayfair, sorry, will actually show up. And as you can see here, black sofas. Um, so just bear that in mind if you are, for example, selling running shoes or if you're selling t-shirts or whatever the case may be try to use the tags or the, the categorization process when you are trying to organize your products because that's really really important a lot of people think the end goal is to rank for buy sofas online but what about all of the different colors blue sofas red sofas yellow sofas what about the, the different fabrics as well so you've got um leather um, fabric, um, all, all, what what other upholstery materials? So you've got genuine leather, you've got fox leather, you have leather match, velvet, um, linen, cord. You've got all the different upholstery materials. And again, if say for example you've got six thousand different sofas, that's you, you've you've probably got a, a good variety of different colours, different um, fabrics. And not only that, you've also got different um, types of sofas as well. So you've got cor corner sofas, you've got sofa beds, you've got um, love seats, etc., etc. So make certain that if you are going down the path of categorizing everything and creating specific URLs for every single type of product, um, make certain that you are creating unique URLs for those because again there is a chance of ranking for all the different variations now if we search for example um, black sofa so that gets 800 searches black sofa actually gets more searches than buy sofas um, online I think it was buy buy sofas gets a hundred searches 
black sofas gets 800 searches and the keyword difficulty is a lot less. Now if we were to do, for example, blue sofas, again, 700 searches. Let's do gray sofas, 600 searches. So then you've got all the different variations. So for example, um, corner sofas. So volume of 800, keyword difficulty of one. Then you've got, let's say, for example, um, fabric sofas. Keyword difficulty of 10, but it gets 1,000 searches. Then you have leather sofas. So very quickly, as you can see, we're essentially building up a catalog with sub uh, categories with, for all of our sofas. So when it comes to the structure of your website, this is super, super important when you are trying to scale out, not just a Magento website, but just any e-commerce website. If you can try and categorize and build a good UI, um, you will go a very, very long way. Now, let's take a look at um, a few other things. So Wayfair does a lot of things right, but they also do a lot of things poorly as well. Um, now, one thing that I would be looking to do is on your category pages, um, so for example, black sofas here, you should try to add some content in here. Um, I actually done a review on a cigar website. Let me just pull this up. Um, buy cigars online. This is a UK website. So see cigars limited.co.uk if you guys do want to check it out but if we were to go to for example Cuban cigars page which is the equivalent of the black sofas page but again it's just a category they actually have a little bit of content here and um, they can definitely add a lot more content talk about like history of, of Cuban cigars on this page um, but for Wayfair, I would have just liked them to have a little bit more content on their category pages for their products. Um, now, if you guys are going to be doing this, let's say you're trying to replicate Wayfair, definitely add some content here and potentially you could even add some content um, at the end of all of your products down here as well. And the reason why we're doing that is we're essentially theming the page. So when Google comes, and lands on this page and tries to essentially rank it, they understand fully, ah, this page is about black sofas or it's about corner sofas or whatever else. Or for example, in this case, it's about Cuban cigars. So that's one thing that I would have liked um, Wayfair to do. Now, the next thing that is very important is the actual product descriptions. Now, the last time I checked Wayfair, they do a pretty decent job with the actual descriptions. So. One thing that a lot of um, new e-commerce website owners do is they don't fill in the description. It's a big, massive no-no. Um, if you can, try to talk about the fabrics, try to talk about the actual product. Potentially, uh, if, say, for example, you're, you're selling furniture such as desks, making certain that you have got the measurements, how high the desk is. If it's an electrical desk, you might say it starts off at one meter height, but then it can go up to two meters height because it's an electric desk. Things like that in the description section will definitely help. Um, weight of the product, um, these guys do have the weight here, or sorry, that's the weight capacity. Um, everything like that will be really good. One thing that I, again, would have liked for these guys or for Wayfair to do is, for example, they're talking about um, a three-seater sofa. They could have internally linked this back up to their three-seater sofa category page. Um, and again, they're talking about poly polyester fabric. They could have internally linked that back up to the polyester fabric sofas page. L-shaped sofa, again, they could have internally linked it back up. But again, um, these guys, they have probably hundreds, if not thousands, or actually they've probably got thousands of products. So not everything on this website is gonna be 100% SEO perfect. Um, it's probably gonna be about 80% of the way there. But that being said, they have done a very good job. Now, a few things when you're creating your product pages that is super important. 
Obviously the URL, um, if you can get keywords in your URL, let's say for example, you have got a L-shaped grey fabric sofa, making certain that that, that that variation is obviously, first of all, in your H1 here, second of all, it's in your URL here, and then further of all, not many people do this, this image, when you are uploading your images, please rename the file name. So if, say for example, you've been using a Canon um, or a, a Sony camera, most of the time they'll um, essentially name the actual file, I don't know, um, image 445 and website owners will upload that image. If you can, for example, rename the images prior to you actually uploading them to your website and making the SEO uh, or making the image SEO friendly, that will help. Um, I actually want to see what they have named this. So what they've named this here, the, the actual image name, is they've called it the Metris Plus or Metris Free Seat or Upholstered Sofa. Um, so these guys, they have, they are actually naming the, their um, their images, which is really good to see. Um, every single one seems named. Um, so very, very, very important, um, especially if you are looking to scale out e-commerce website. Make certain that you are um, naming your files correctly. Um, otherwise, Google won't know what that image is. Um, I know that obviously with the help of Google Lens and with the help of Google AI, they do understand um, what's in an image, but again, you just don't, you just want to eliminate the guesswork. And if it takes you, let's say, an extra two seconds to rename the file, and again, it's just best practice for SEO. Another thing that's super important as well when it comes to um, when it comes to e-commerce or Magento SEO is the fact that you're not just going to want to rank your website in Google search. So if I was to search, for example, L-shaped um, sofa, a lot of people, um, for example, my if, if I was just going to be buying, like, let's say, a L-shaped uh, sofa, I would probably click on a few of these results. However, not everybody thinks like me. I know that females, for example, they much prefer looking on, on Pinterest or Google Images. So a super important thing to actually name in your files is the fact that you can rank your images in Google Images. And again, this, for example, is a much nicer um, experience because, again, you don't need to click on each individual website, view their product range, and then go back, select the second website, view their product range. You can very quickly see, ah, right, okay, I like this corner sofa, I'm gonna buy this. Um, so again, ranking your images, especially when it comes to Magento or Shopify or, or WooCommerce SEO, just definitely spend an extra couple minutes renaming your files prior to you uploading them. It's not going to kill you. Um, it, it's, if anything, it's just going to increase the, the performance of, of your website um, on Google Images. And again, in some cases, if you have really nice images like this image is really nice, you can also get Pinterest traffic through to your website as well. So again, you're not just relying on Google SEO traffic, you're relying on multiple, um, or you're diversifying your traffic sources as well. So that has been my video on Magento SEO. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. And if you want help with your Magento SEO website, or if you want help with growing traffic to your website, make sure to check out casradash.com. The link is in the description. You can get a free 15-minute strategy call with myself. Thanks.